It's long before the advent of social media and shows like TMZ, Leona Helmsley was the poster child of tabloid fodder for decades. After inheriting her late husband's billions dollar fortune back in 2007, the woman who became known as the Queen of Mean was famous for sayings like, only little people pay taxes. Similarly, she served 19 months in prison for tax evasion and when she died in 2003, she left $12 million to her dog. But what most people don't know is that she also left billions of dollars to her inner circle in order to allocate to charitable endeavors. Joining us now is Leona Helmsley's longtime lawyer and her one and only true friend, Sandy Frankel, who has written a new book called The Accidental Philanthropist, setting the record straight about her legacy, which includes giving away $3 billion around the world and over $400 million in grants here in Israel. Welcome, Sandy. And first, let's start. Tell us how and why you had compassion for the woman that everybody loved to hate. Picked it up right away, but you didn't have to be particularly smart to pick it up right away. It was quite obvious. Uh, and of course, I felt compassion for her. She was essentially a lonely woman. The two of us would sit and talk. We would talk first about litigation matters that I was handling for her, then other matters as they developed. And then about life. And we'd sit there in this palace is the only way to describe it. The sun would the sun would gradually set over the, the glorious vista of Central Park and New York that she overlooked. She would occasionally go over to a window and take inventory of the properties that she owned. And we would talk about uh, life, things that human beings talk about. But she never had a real friend that she could confide in. And so here she was basically confiding and letting her heart out to a lawyer who she had met just a few years ago and had some compassion for her. And so I, I saw the three dimensionality of the person, not just the queen of mean. You were her lawyer for the last 18 years of her life until she died in 2007. But the next thing you knew, you were responsible for managing the trustee, being the, being the managing trustee and allocating billions of dollars from the Helmsley Trust. As a guy from the Bronx, how did you actually react to handling so much money? When, when she died, she had left an estate of just about five and a half billion, that's with a B, dollars. I, I gulp when I say it even. It's 14 years later and I'm still gulping. Basically what happened to me is I was just doing my job and life put a wheelbarrow full of gold coins in front of me, dumped it and said, do good for the world. The trust had no programs. Five of us at the time, now three of us, had to create programs starting from scratch. We were building the airplane while it was flying and juggling fine China at the same time. You and the trustees have given away over $3 billion in, in many sectors, allowing you to do real good in the world. But you have a real soft spot in particular for Israel. Tell us why. My wife is a Sabra, and she always wins the contest. When Israelis get together, as you know, they always uh, talk about how deep their roots are in Israel. And she always wins the contest because hers go back so many, so many generations. And I called the office of President Perez and he was kind enough to invite uh, my wife and I to meet with him. What should we do? And he said, what distinguishes us from the rest of the world are our brains. You should invest in our brains. We followed the president's advice and began investing in universities in Israel. We, we have invested many, many millions of dollars in every university in Israel. The Helmsley Trust has given away well over $400 million here in Israel in many different industries. Tell us more. We chose grants and continue to choose grants where we can really have an impact, where we can mm -hmm. affect lots of lives in a very, very meaningful way. We've given close to $200 million to Israeli hospitals, including when COVID first hit Israel on an emergency basis, we awarded $12.5 million in grants to a variety of Israeli hospitals for COVID-specific purposes. 
we are very, very active in the periphery. Literally yesterday, we awarded a grant of $15 million to Perea for a rehabilitation center. We've given grants for clinics that surround the Gaza Strip. Our largest grant so far was to the, uh, the Rambam to build a, or we've ch we're changing basically the literal landscape of Haifa. If you go to Haifa today, if you haven't been there for a year, you'll see there's a 20 story building there now that uh, we were the seed money for. It's called the Helmsley building. We've given, uh, we've given money for a Mediterranean Sea Research uh, Center uh, at the University of Haifa. We've given many millions of dollars to the Balkani for development right. of, of uh, agriculture. Uh, you're a busy guy. You also wrote uh, a new book, The Accidental Philanthropist. Why, in your opinion, is it important to share the charitable legacy of Leona Helmsley in death? I've written uh, three other books before this. And as I thought about my, my good fortune of being able to do this good work, it occurred to me that my story is an, is a, an interesting one, not because of me, but because what befell me. I mean, I'm a, a, uh, a guy from the Bronx who had an interesting enough life for the first 40 plus years of it. And all of a sudden, I, I met uh, Leona Helmsley and the, the world the world changed, and now all of a sudden, here I am in in a position where my when I meet people, my jokes are funnier, my wit is wittier, everything I say is worth listening to. It's absolutely remarkable. There are two rules that I always keep in mind. The first rule is it is all about the Helmsley money. It's not about me. And the second rule is always remember the first rule. Mm -hmm. Sandy Frankel, thank you very much for your time.